Do you ladies know where the Miami River is? No. <laughs> no. Do you know what the Miami River is at all? No. <laughs> Not really, other than a river. <laughs> Never heard anything about the Miami River? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know you pass it on the Metro Rail. There's a lot of folks that don't even know it's there. Don't even know it's the fourth largest port in the state. The value of the historical neighborhoods along its banks. The deep, rich history of the river. Have you guys ever heard of the Miami River? No. no. Nothing no. about the Nothing. Miami River. No. Where is it? For those that did know it, the river did go through decades of neglect um, in the 60s, the 70s, um, and it was the back door. It was where the dumpster was. It was where the parking lot was. Well, it's got more, it's got, it's more dynamic. It, it's just, it's got a lot of different features to it. It's not just a river that winds its way through different neighborhoods and the neighborhoods abut the river and there's no activity on the river. This is a river where you've got tugboats and you've got houseboats and you've got shipyards and you've got an FPNL plant and you've got big construction going on and you've got marinas and you've got people fishing. That's a working river. And you've got people with just piles of containers and piles of stuff to put on these old freighters that are going to be tugged uh, down river out to deep water and they're going to end up over in Belize or Haiti or Honduras, and that happens every day. That's what a working river is, and that's what this is. I used to have a blast, you know, touring Miami by boat as a kid. That was my pathway to freedom, you know. That was uh, the only way I could get out from underneath parental provision was to get in my little 10-foot boat and take a trip on the river. And uh, so that became, you know, my road to freedom was the Miami River and the canals that fed the Miami River. I guess if there were, was a beach there, Maybe I would go. No, I would not go swimming in that water. Miami River helps you to connect with the past. The, the fact that you can find out about places along the river that most people don't know about kind of give you an inside understanding of and how it got developed. The Miami River's um, various attractions like the old Musa Isle Indian Village, uh, Copinger's Gardens, which is on the South Fork, used to be on the Platte Books, it was named as the Alligator Farm. It was the first place where alligators were wrestled. Uh, Copinger um, hired um, Indians to live on the property and to wrestle alligators after allegedly seeing a fellow down on the Fifth Street Bridge at the Miami River wrestle an alligator. That connection with history, as well as all the uh, now archaeological sites along the Miami River that are is tremendous excitement about the old civilizations that predated ours. So all of that is waiting there, and I think that's going to create a kind of excitement about the river, a kind of connection of the river that would otherwise not exist. 1844, when the Fort Dallas was built, which is currently in Loomis Park, Miami-Dade County's first courthouse, first post office. Fast forward to the early 1900s when Julia Tuttle met with Henry Flagler and convinced him to extend his railroad to the Miami River to the city of Miami. He extended it to the river's north shore originally in the early 1900s. And that was really the birthplace and the beginning of the incorporated city of Miami. It's also hosted a lot of other things. Um, three Jesuit missions to the Indians, a couple of slave plantations, a couple of army forts, the home of Julia Tuttle, again, the mother of Miami, uh, Henry Flagler's magnificent Royal Palm Hotel. And today, it's truly a working river, and it has been a working river for a century now. The river is only four and a half miles in its original length. It stretches from the mouth of the river out to a little west of 27th Avenue. And then there's a canal that picks up the river at 24th Avenue. It takes it all the way to the Lake Okeechobee, which was one of the first drainage canals to drain the Everglades. It was dug between 1909 and 1912. So it has a lot of purpose in this river. The area west of 27th Avenue, which is technically the canal, is the second port of Miami. That's where much of this trade, this commerce is done. I fish. Sure. Yeah, I'm fishing there. But the, the fish in there no good for eat. They don't taste good to no, you? No, no. The water is no good. Matter of fact, at a park, they've been Loomis Park, Miami's oldest park, formerly known as City Park. They've been having an annual catch and release uh, fishing tournament. And, and they do indeed catch fish. And uh, there's also great manatees to see along the Miami River. 
owner is a gentleman of the Big Fish restaurant on the Miami River, told me the other day he saw a dolphin. It's I'm not very appealing though. It's yeah. like the river. <laughs> it sounds cold. It sounds, it sounds cold. cold. Yeah, it doesn't sound warm at all. Okay. Nothing like the beach. Never been there. I've heard stories though. What stories have you heard? Contamination, pollution, stuff like that. Modern sewage treatment plant was put under in Virginia Key in the 50s, and the sewage has been rerouted, you know, to the Keys. It is very much cleaner than it was. They look on it as being unclean, and it could be better, of course, but it's much better than it was. I can say that every, you know, everything is relative, of course. In the old days, there was a lot more trash. Uh, even 10 years ago, you were finding more uh, floating dead chickens and, and or goats or whatever was lately sacrificed to you know, in the Santeria ritual or whatever, that was much more common 10 years ago than it is today. Why? I don't know. I'm, probably there's some other place where chickens float uh, in greater number than maybe the Miami River. If you see the river for the first time and you see something floating by, you'll say, ah, oh, my, uh, a dirty river. But if you look at that picture compared to how it used to be, when you might have found five things in the river at one time in one small spot, it's a lot better these days. So I'm, I'm optimistic that we're getting more and more conscious about the need to protect these resources. What comes to mind when you think Miami River? I guess like the first form of transportation, you know, water base when Miami was established. Before we had streets and all, I used the river to like, you know, drive by. First thing that comes into my head is that it's kind of polluted. Miami River Commission's number one priority project is the removal of one million tons of contaminated sediments from the Miami River through the Miami River Maintenance Dredging Project. Rivers around the world require maintenance, and the Miami River, surprisingly, has never been maintenance dredged. These decades of neglect have caused what is supposed to be a designated 15-foot deep federal navigable channel has now filled with contaminated sediments to approximately 11 feet deep. Dredging is the only way to remove these contaminated sediments and will be a significant improvement to the Miami River's natural environment in addition to the natural environment of Biscayne Bay, which has been receiving these contaminated sediments over the decades. I used to frequently be invited to talk about the river. And I took a gallon of river water right off my dock from about eight inch, 18 inches down, pumped it through the boat. Took a gallon of river water and distilled it down to a pint. And then I took a gallon of river water from the municipal water supply in my kitchen, what we, most people drink every day, and I distilled that down to a pint. And when I gave my talk, I'd shake up these two bottles. One would be clear and the other one would be dark brown. And I'd ask the audience to pick the one that came from the river. They'd always say the dark brown one, but that's the city water that you're drinking. And I remember one time when the Miami Herald interviewed an officer from the EPA that had come down to examine the municipal water system. And his closing comment was, it meets all of the federal standards, but I wouldn't drink it. And we're talking about city water. Mostly when everybody hears Miami, it's just beaches and stuff. You hear a river, it's like, wow, you know? Some people might want to go see it. But then when they hear rumors about it being contaminated and polluted, it's like, it gives people a negative thought. So when the sediment is taken out, when they finish dredging in a couple of years, I expect it to stay reasonably clean for quite a long time. And, and I expect the public attitude towards the river to change completely, you know, when they can see the bottom and they can see all the fish that are in there. Well, it's never been the same as it was, but it can come back and in many ways be similar to the way it was. I really think that there is a move back to the center city. People are sick of traffic. There is a huge movement, what we call urban infill, that is, move back to the city. You've got to re redevelop, redevelop areas where there's vacant lots. Bring people back. Get out of your cars. The river's a great beneficiary of that. You're finding more and more sharp people, educated people, curious people, wanting to move into these old neighborhoods in the inner city, center city, many of which are close to the river. You know, a young couple walking along the river madly in love, it's in Paris. Why can't it be the Miami River? And it can be. So I, I see a great future in terms of a people river for this river. There will be so many people with a vested interest in the quality of life on the river that it could easily bring back uh, the thought that the, that the river is the heart of the city. You can only watch a brown, you know, uh, silt go out and come back so often before you think, hmm, I wonder if that could be cleaned up, you know, and that's, that could be our future, that we have a lot of uh, witnesses to the uh, need to keep our river clean and, and to make it uh, the beautiful asset it could be.